So let's dig in a little bit deeper. So maybe to kick off, so for our Q4 outlook, BlackRock really suggested that now investors should harness what we call mega forces. And so what we see is that there's going to be a series of significant shifts across economies, across sectors that are going to disrupt profitability and essentially will open up long run kind of opportunities, but that's already being played out now. And I think really what comes to mind is the art artificial intelligence, exuberance, that has really driven the U.S. equity rally so far this year. Is this really just hype, or are there actual fundamental secular demand drivers behind this? We can think about geopolitical fragmentation, what's happening in the world now, the subsequent rise in commodity prices. Is this cyclical? Is this secular? But perhaps the one that I want to kind of touch on first is the really the dominant kind of debate that I think most strategists and investors have had for the past couple of years. And that's really this question about inflation. Is inflation secular or is it cyclical? So we can think about last week, stocks and bonds had this exceptional rally. The Fed signaled that they're probably done their hiking cycle. The US 10 year yield you know, went from 5%. We've seen it you know, bid quite strongly. Is this, Ira, I want to turn to you first. You know, are we in this kind of secular new macro regime of elevated inflation where what we have seen is a repricing of rates to higher equilibrium? Or as we've seen in the past you know, week or so, this is just a cyclical trend, inflation will ease and we'll start to see more of those duration bids and we are maybe in this lower in, in yield environment once again. Well, I think when we talk about the uh, secular versus cyclical, I think secularly, the uh, the 40 plus year rally in, in the fixed income markets is over. So I, I think that's the first thing that we can say is that we have broken that trend. We're not going down to negative 2% or wherever the long term trend from 1984 to present is going to take you. So th I, I think the question is, has that secular trend turned? And if it has turned, which I do think it has, are we, is it going to be upward or are we going to basically go sideways and just have more cyclicality uh, within a new kind of sideways trend? And I think that's probably where we're eventually headed, but nobody really knows that yet. So it's going to take some time to determine you know, where, uh, w what the cyclicality then is of inflation. I think the one thing that the market's currently getting wrong is with 10-year inflation break-evens at under 2.5%, I think there's an opportunity there because I do suspect that over uh, you know, 10 years or so that will subsequently print inflation somewhat higher than that. So we won't quite get down to the Fed's 2% target, um, but we'll get very close, uh, you know, if you, because remember, they're also using a different metric than CPI. They're using the PCE deflator, um, but we'll, we'll never quite reach it. So, so the days of 1% inflation and disinflation, I think, are over for probably the next generation or so. So Yesha, maybe turning to you. So are you of the mind that we are in this higher inflation regime and we are going to see yields reprice at these elevated levels? I mean, we could see the 10 year with that 4.5 to 5.5 is the new norm. Or do you kind of have the, the, the opposite view, whereas now 5% yield is quite an attractive entry point? And what really are the portfolio implications if we are in this kind of regime change? Thank you. Um, well, I think uh, the market, hearing also from, from the conference here, has already come to grips with the reality Ira mentioned, in the sense that the last 15 years of very low inflation, uh, very low interest rates is over. I think that's why we're seeing so much uncertainty uh, in the bond market, right? That's where the moment has been much more violent compared to its normal volatility. Because everyone's trying to figure out where that you know, secular mean is, if you will. And um, so we, we in, our, in, our, you know, uh, in our discussions with my PM team, as well as our economists, are also of the mind that you know, inflation is going to be normalized and higher than what we've seen in the last 30, 40 years uh, since the uh, you know, 80s, right? Um, that said, um, there are interesting secular forces at play, hopefully we'll get into, that move in opposite directions. So we are gonna continuously monitor this, but our expectation is probably um, inflation around two and a half percent for the next, next decade is, is, you know, is a fair value in a sense that the Fed is targeting officially 2%. 
but I don't think they're going to hardly target that, like very strictly. So they're going to allow a bit of a drift. Um, so, so that's our kind of inf you know inflation expectation. And the rates again will are very much related to obviously inflation, and we expect uh, rates to be higher. And we have all these fancy models. I have quant background as well. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to go to the basics, right? So what's the cost of capital in the economy? Well, if you think about the US economy, right? So if the US potential growth is 2%, real GDP growth, right? And then if inflation is around 2 2.5%, what's the cost of capital? At the moment, 4.5%, right? So I think so something like 4%, 4.5%, long-term 10-year interest rate is something the U.S. economy can't handle. Mm -hmm. I think we can debate whether, you know, within this then, you know, what are the drivers? Is that 2% really uh, the potential growth? But um, I, so our view has been that, yeah, um, there are cyclical forces at play, but we think we're landing at a secular trend here. Um, and our portfolio is positioned to have some real assets in it, right? So I do have a strategic allocation to real assets in my portfolios. And, and I do vary that based on the business cycle, the, depending on the inflation cycle. And, and we think that that's smart, that you know, a lot of investors should have some real assets, things like infrastructure, right? <laughs> Not resources and, and commodities. So you want those drivers in your portfolio. Although in the long term, equities are a real asset, <laughs> unlike nominal bonds. But that short-term shock can really hit you if you don't have inflation protection in your portfolio.